today we have a wonderful guest speaker. I'm very proud to introduce to you Omar Mitchell, who is the Vice President, Sustainable Infrastructure and Growth at the National Hockey League. Omar focuses on embedding environmental sustainability throughout the league and growing access to hockey via strategies focused on the sport's physical infrastructures, right, our rinks, our venues, um, and it's with a special focus on community rinks, right? We got to get those kids and other people engaged. Omar joined the NHL in 2012, serving as the league's first environmental sustainability director and overseeing the award-winning and globally acclaimed NHL Green Initiative. I actually still have one of your hockey pucks. Um, in April, 2022, Omar was featured in the Sports Business Journal as, quote, an executive to know in sports sustainability. Congratulations. Thank you. And Ad Week recognized Omar as a sustainability star, which, of course, those of us who know him know that to be true. And that was as part of their 2021 inaugural class of brand leaders on a mission to help save the planet. Um, I've known Omar for a number of years now, and I have to say he is really a good and smart guy. Um, he holds an MBA from MIT's Sloan School of Management, a Master of Architecture from Columbia University in the city of New York. So with that, Omar, you're awesome. Thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Some quick questions for you. Why does the NHL care about sustainability and why do you care? Absolutely. So first of all, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Stephen, thank you for the opportunity to, um, to let me share some thoughts. And thank you for your leadership um, in the Ashkin Group um, throughout the years. Um, we've known each other for a long time. And I know that you personally have been responsible for a lot of moving the industry forward on a lot of our sustainability efforts. So thank you for, for your leadership in this space. So when I think about why the NHL cares about sustainability, uh, the first thing I would say is uh, we, sustainability is embedded in the roots of our game. If you've ever played the sport, you know that our sport was born outdoors on frozen ponds. We need cold weather, we need fresh water, we need vibrant and healthy communities so that we can have kids that'll play our sport. And so more so than any other sport, our roots are embedded in, um, in the environment. And therefore we need to make sure that we are catering to environmental concerns in a meaningful way. Because ice hockey is embedded in, um, in a lot of, of natural, um, natural resources and cold weather. And it's from that kind of purview that we built out our NHL green platform uh, almost 13 years ago, which was around trying to drive awareness and embed awareness around our environmental sustainability efforts to engage fans around why this is important. This is critical. We are in the sports and entertainment sector, right? So people look at hockey, they look at baseball, football, but our industry has a way of uniting people together and bringing people around different causes and inspiring them through their team, through um, what's on the field or on the ice. And so we can use our platform to really engage people and our fans, our millions of fans that watch our game to adopt some of these causes and bring awareness to some of these causes. And environmental sustainability is one of those things. The last thing I will say is, is that sustainability is meaningful for our business. It's a business imperative, right? Why is that? So if you ever play our, if you ever look at our sport in, a, in an NHL arena, we play in what is essentially a giant refrigerator. We use a lot of energy to keep the ice cold. We use a lot of energy to ensure that um, we're keeping our arenas cold. And so, and to make, to have the best world-class ice skating conditions for our players. And so when you think about the roots of our sport, and when you think about the physical impacts of our sport, where we play our game, 
we have an imperative, a business imperative to reduce our carbon footprint or our impact where possible. Altogether, that's the reason why we prioritize this effort. And for me personally, I am very fortunate to have uh, spearheaded and led the NHL in this initiative because it's also built into my DNA. I grew up um, in a Caribbean country, so not anywhere close to ice hockey, 11 degrees north of the equator, but I grew up um, having an appreciation for the natural environment. And my career, and my I had a passion for the built environment and architecture. So the built environment, the natural environment, doing lead buildings and building um, in physical infrastructure. And I realized in my career that there was only so much I can do being an architect. I wanted to expand my, my, um, my skill set. And I recognized that building sustainability within businesses is going to be the next critical need for the 21st century. And so that's where I pivoted my career. And it's meaningful for me because it's something that I know that I can do to leave a lasting impact for my kids and my kids' kids. This is something that's personal and meaningful for me. And I'll tell you, this is hard work. This is like moving a tanker ship 180 degrees or 90 degrees even. It takes a lot of, of, of courage. It takes a lot of, of, of you know, knowing how to, what is essentially change management. Because sustainability is all about change management. It's about doing things much more efficiently, much more effectively, so that you're driving positive change. And so that's where I get my, um, my energy, knowing that I'm doing good. Awesome. Thank you, Omar. And hopefully uh, the cleaning industry will be able to support your work. And we certainly appreciate that you're supporting ours. Um, but let me get into some nuts and bolts. Yeah. Um, one of the things I love about sports is they keep score. Man, they keep statistics on everything, right? So my question to you is, what metrics are you using that are relevant or important at this time and in the future specific to sustainability issues? Okay, so the first thing, it's a, good, it's a great question and you're absolutely right. I mean, we now have um, uh, chips, uh, computer chips embedded in our puck to measure the speed and velocity of the pucks and the players so that we have all this data and keeping score, not just about the score on the, on the scoreboard, but like every single aspect of, of the game, there are metrics for it. In the same way, we as a business have really gone deep into data and, and analytics on every facet of our business because every business decision is a data-driven decision. And so sustainability, embedding sustainability into that practice is no different. The way that we do it, remember how I mentioned that we play in giant refrigerators, our NHL arenas? So when we think about it, when we evaluated our sustainability, our carbon footprint, we recognize that 70% of our carbon emissions comes from the actual operations of the venue of the NHL arena. So we recognize that we needed to start tracking those venue operations. So think of things like energy, natural gas, electricity, waste, water, recycling. Those types of components are things that will help us understand and evaluate our carbon impact. For those folks who don't know this, or for those folks who do, those equate to what we call greenhouse gas, scope one, scope two, and limited scope three um, greenhouse gas emissions. Those are just terms that for those who don't know, it's it's just a way of quantifying what your carbon footprint is. And for those folks who don't know, who do know, scope one and scope two are what's literally um, what's relevant for uh, to evaluate your car, your environmental impact. What we're doing now is that we are capturing all of that data. We did it in 2014 when we released our sustainable our first NHL sustainability report, where we quantified the league's carbon footprint, the first of its kind from any major pro sports. Um, pro Sport League in the in North America. We did it again in 2018. 
in 2022, we were a little bit um, uh, shifted with COVID and we expect to, do, to, to uh, put out a report this year in 2023, where we will quantify the carbon footprint. The next step in that iteration of tracking our venue operations is things like food and beverage, where our concessions come from, things like the operational aspects of what we use in our buildings, whether it's stuff like refrigerants, whether it's stuff like, uh, like cleaning supplies, whether it's every single facet or every single aspect that goes into operating a multi-purpose sport and entertainment venue. That's where we're seeing um, data tracking. And the reason why we're doing this is not just to know what our carbon footprint is, is so that we can baseline and we can start to measure because we know the mantra that you cannot impact what you do not measure. And surprisingly, I will tell you in sports and entertainment, a lot of the facility operators, they know their building like the back of their hand, they know it inside and out, but they don't have the time to sit down and like pour through the data and to understand how to make positive changes. So we at the league are helping our venues do just that. And so with that type of tracking of venue operations, we are tracking those impacts and we're ensuring that we can provide baselines, comparisons, league averages, so that venues can start to operate more effectively. Thank you, Omar. Um, we, we got a question from um, one of our team man members. And yeah. if you don't mind, I'd like to just ask you. Absolutely. And his question had to do with tracking scope three emissions. Um, and he said, is that where the impact of team travel and also fans come, you know, getting to the arena um, to see the games? That's absolutely right. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. So when you think of scope three emissions, that also includes not just the things that are coming into and being used in the facility, but it also accounts for things like team travel as we fly around the country to uh, play our games as well as um, fan travel into our buildings. And as, um, as somebody who's been doing practitioner of this work for 10 plus years, I could tell you that the hardest nut to crack in our sustainability journey is fan travel. Understanding what those impacts are related to fans coming into our buildings. Um, because it's very hard to quantify or to understand and evaluate what that is. But as a practitioner of this work, I also know that fan travel is one of the biggest um, our biggest scope three emitters, carbon impacts um, related to our, our, our um, to sports and entertainment. So I like to say this, I'll finish by saying this. We recognize that sustainability is part of a much longer journey. We, even though we've been doing this for 10 or 11 years now, or sorry, 12, 13 years now, we recognize that this is, we are just at the beginning stages of a much longer journey. Fan travel will start to analyze, team travel will start to analyze, but we think that the first part is to get our house in order. We need to get our house, our NHL arenas in order, because that's where we know that we can have real impact, because if we get our house in order, then we can start to expand and grow how we think about sustainability and embedding sustainability within our organization. And then we can tell fans, we have the credibility to tell fans to tell the narrative of what they can do in their local communities. You will hear this thread that I'll talk about this, about getting fans to act. But the most important thing is that, the most important thing is we have to get our house in order first. And that's why metrics, keeping score is so important in our organization. Thank you. And let me ask you one last question and we'll let you yeah. go. Um, so you've been doing this for a number of years now. And I suspect some teams, some venues have been really great about helping and others have been much more reluctant. And I suspect we'll find some of the same things taking place in our industry. And of course, most of the people, the people who are on this committee, they're obviously into it, right? They're, so what, do you have any recommendations for us on terms of how to proceed so that we not only could... Uh, move forward with the leaders, but also bring up the rest of the people so we can move the whole industry forward. 
Yes. And I appreciate the question because it's a really important one. We have to reframe the context of how we talk about sustainability. So what do I mean by that? Sustainability, we talk about environmental impact and, and whatnot. When I talk about sustainability to our clubs and venues, I term it up in terms of sustainability equals innovation. Steve, you talked about innovation in your opening remarks. Sustainability equals innovation. When you address or when you go to your customers, your clients, um, venues, and you talk about being innovative, using the latest and greatest to reduce energy, to increase efficiencies, to reduce uh, costs, and to have meaningful impact to your customers that are coming into our venues, that's where you get a lot of traction. So reframing that context uh, in sustainability equals innovation gets people's ears perked up. They want to learn more. They want to understand what you're talking about. Sustainability equals innovation. I think that, that that's the first thing. Because when you frame it in that context, it's not about being green. It's not about being political. It's not about being political. It's all about making your operations more efficient and being innovative. And your CEO, all the way down to the chief operating officer, to your venue manager, to your asset manager, wants to hear, how can I be more innovative? How can I reduce costs? How can I spend my CapEx more appropriately? That's the first thing. The second thing is um, you have to change the way that we think or, or understand trends so we get everybody moving in the right direction. So trends coming out of COVID, as an example, is that we saw a lot of focus on health and safety within, and particularly within our venues. The GBAC um, star rating is one example of that, where you saw a lot of focus on maintaining, um, doing practices that ensure health and safety, proper cleanliness within the venues. That's a really important thing because we're not just focusing on sustainability as for the planet, it's people and planet. And that's really important because then operators, the venue operators in my case, our, our, our industry knows that we should be prioritizing the health and safety of our customers and our employees equally as important as what we do with the planet. And so we need to frame that context to bring the laggards around because those are, that's the language that they will understand. By doing those things, they'll get more customers and that we are prioritizing those efforts. And then the last thing I would say is that we have to take, there's a, a really big movement within ESG, uh, environmental social governance. Again, not political. This is real, where ESG is being embedded into a lot of business decisions. And so those first movers, those guys who are doing it really well, they're really prioritizing it into their business operations. And the idea is to shine a light on those people who are doing it really well. And to bring those people who may not be doing it because everybody is on different parts of their spectrum in terms of adopting sustainability, bringing them along because they will recognize that the people who are doing it well are doing good business. And good business equates to healthy revenues and healthy profits. My role in the industry is to amplify and show those people who are doing it well. And I encourage you, the folks who are on this call, to really drive systematic change so that you can showcase within your industry how you can help support those movements, whether it's an innovation, whether it's on, on health and well-being within your venues, and whether it's building the ESG case so that you're doing better, better business. You play an, inf uh, an integral role in that. It's not just from the top down, it's from top down and bottom up. And so I encourage you to really drive this agenda forward because you're an integral stakeholder in all of this to move the needle forward. Omar, you're awesome. Thank you so very much for spending a few minutes with us. We really genuinely appreciate your thoughts. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your season. And um, we may be back to you to ask um, what we can do to really assist you and make at least the reporting on cleaning products and services and those things easier for your teams and venues. So thank you, thank you, thank you again and have a great rest of your day, pal. Thank you, everybody. I hope this was useful and I'm happy to reconvene, you know, talk through some of those specifics like you mentioned.
because this not this this is um has this onion has a lot of layers and um and i'm happy to talk through any of those with you all thank you thanks everybody thank you panel okay